Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies and this is the Hoyt Ventrum 3030. 3030? 30, 30. It's a 30. The Ventrum comes in a 33 or a 30. 30 inches axle axle. Does this bow represent the biggest and best Hoyt ever made? That's the question I asked when I saw this bow. Now in the past I've been criticised in my reviews of Hoyt so saying no, look I love PSC or I've got a PSC hat on or look your views are not right, Hoyt don't need parallel limbs, Hoyt don't need this, Hoyt don't need black roller guards and Hoyt don't need adjustable modules. This bow to me looks the best Hoyt I've ever seen without having shot it. I haven't shot it yet. What it's got, it's got adjustable draw length from 25 to 30 inches with a rotating module. I can't be hated by Hoyt fanboys for saying that. This cam system is awesome. It looks great. It's what Hoyt should have had back years ago. It makes sales easy for the shops. It makes it easy for the consumer. All you've got to do is rotate this module to change the draw length. Thank you, Hoyt. Why did I have to get so much hate mail for saying that back years ago when Hoyt had modules and you had to fit a module to change the draw length? Biggest pain in the butt that was. Um, it was really hard to get the modules and it was like every bow had a different module. It was just nightmare stuff for the shops, nightmare stuff for the customers. So to start off with, the modules. You don't need a bow press to adjust the module. Thumbs up two allen keys here to, to rotate the module they look awesome love it and what i really love see where the allen key sits in the module so just there there's little grooves so they sit exactly in the spot there's also a pin so the module sits in a pin now this is very much like a pse module that fits into the cam now that's not unique these days it's pretty standard they have little pins where the modules fit in most companies have that Bowtech has it elite have it obviously pse have it most people have it except for matthews who still is still a math is still a matthews bow is still a module pacific bow so this to me is a really really cool feature of the new hoyt now what i also love is the new pse module Look, you can change the lead off. Look, I haven't even read this, but it's got a draw stop here which moves backwards and forwards, and that's to change the lead off. PSC has got that on there, bows. I love that feature. It makes it easy and, and adjustable for the consumer. It makes it easy for the shops to sell this bow. Love that feature. The limbs are parallel and maybe a little bit beyond parallel, which means there's going to be not much shock, which is good. Good cam system here, modules. These are the standard limbs you're going to find on every bow. These are the Gordon Glass limb. Look, they might be slightly tailored for the Hoyt, for the Hoyt shop by Hoyt. Um, some of the Hoyt limbs have got a special lamination over the top. I'm not sure if these do or don't. But the Hoyt limbs have always been pretty much indestructible. But these are now your standard kind of limbs. You've got a um, dampener on here. This is pretty standard in the past. Um, Hoyt have had some different dampeners, um, which has had some varying, you know, good or bad things about them. The limb pocket system here is really, actually, it's interesting. I was expecting this to be part of the limb system. They fit in here, so they clamp together here on the sides um, to hold it in place, and they fit into a metal limb pocket here, which is all. This bracket here fits inside the riser to hold it all in place. It's a nice system. A roller cable guard. This is going to get rid of the cables moving backwards and forwards. That's awesome. Like, I feel like I'm a Hoyt fanboy already without even shooting this bow. Um, what else? The grip on this bow feels like a Hoyt grip. So it's a rounded grip. So if you're familiar with Hoyts, if you've shot Hoyt for years and years, this grip feels exactly the same. So it's not going to be like your Elites. It's not going to be like your Matthews. It's not going to be like your PSEs. This is a unique grip system. It's a plastic grip. It's very much like every Hoyt you've shot before, pretty much. Um, so it's going to feel pretty much the same. 
it's quite narrow your hand fits in the right sort of angle it makes it hard for you to do that it makes it very easy for you to do that it's really nice it's got a lower stabilizer here to obviously absorb shock and vibration which is nice little dampeners down here you can still use a stabilizer at the front now this to me looks like a Matthews I feel like Matthews has done this before um, tell me if I'm wrong I'm pretty sure they have um, these little things on the side so obviously for there for a two-piece quiver one of them's for a side stabilizer um, like it's only one only one arrow um, for arrow rests here which is kind of surprising because John Dudley who used to be with Hoyt is a huge fan of two um, arrow rest positioning maybe that's why he left Hoyt I don't know I'm just going to throw that out there but there's one there now Hoyt have got a uh, rest that bolts into the back here an integrated rest um, and they've got a sight which integrates onto the front or you can um, have it screwing to the side I'm not real fan of the front facing thing but that's up to you um, look this bow looks good the cams look good I love the edging here on the cam see the edging that's going to try and reduce the chances of you derailing the cam now in the past I would have criticized Hoyt on their cams designs that they've had Hoyt have changed their cams this year it's a binary cam system or it's a cam system that Hoyt's renamed to something else it's a twin cam should have done it before I'm gonna say now with a twin cam system top and bottom cam are the same so you've got to time them so they hit at the same point um, saying that if you've got cam lean so let's say you this cam leans or you want to do tuning what you can do is you got to shim this cam left to right that's pretty standard there's a lot of bow companies using a binary cam system you're gonna say well Bowtech came out with a binary cam years ago look yes look whatever this is very similar it reminds me of the elite cam system that you see today although the elite cam system has got a string stop which is what um, Hoyt have got here and they've also got the ability to fit a limb stop this bow to my knowledge doesn't have a limb stop um, but it still looks really good the strings look good I don't know what this is here this seems to be on a lot of the Hoyts I'm not sure what it is but overall now the other thing I would have been criticized for <laughs> in the past is price point so I always used to say Hoyt is like a you know like an elite product not like the elite bow company but they've priced themselves at a high price point in the market um, so they really appeal to I'm gonna say people who like showing off their wealth uh, it is what it is right um, but it was pitched as a premier product to premier archers now this year I'm finding the this bow in particular so this is top of the line metal riser um, from Hoyt um, it's pretty similar price point in the market to the rest of the companies so it's very similar to your elites Matthews maybe Matthews is more expensive now than this I think I've got a price point in my head of 1600 for this and what that's doing it's place it's placing it if 1600 is correct this is Australian dollars I did look it's about 1200 American dollars so you have to compare how it compares in American dollars to the other bows but I'm just talking Australian dollars it now prices it very equivalent to the top of the line PSEs, the top of the line elites and the top of the line Botex so this now puts things like like for like you can now compare the top of the line Hoyt to the top of the line PSE to the top of the line elite to the top of the line Botech. it now makes an interesting case because before the Hoyts I always felt were like a little bit more expensive and then you had to say well it's a premier product is it a premier product and there was definitely things in Hoyt where you could say well look the limbs are really good it's a high quality product they're not having these problems I don't know how the warranty is with Hoyt um, I'm gonna say because I haven't had any failures right but when there has been failures that I know of in the state the the owners the owners of those bows have had to pay for replacement parts I'm not a Hoyt distributor so I'm not having a go at Hoyt 
Um, they, their boats are generally bulletproof and they're regarded in the industry as generally a pretty bulletproof boat. So, um, but I'm going to say I'm not sure what the customer service aspect of Hoyt is like because um, I don't deal with Hoyt. I'm going to say um, other companies are amazing with customer service as far as like if they, if they have a product which is, you know, breaks and it's years old, they seem to fix it and it just blows me away how they fix it at no cost. It just is amazing. Um, but this, to me, is such a improvement on Hoyt's before. It's not like, well, I'm producing a bow in a black box anymore from the past. This is like that builder bow which stands on its own two feet and goes, this is an impressive bow product and it's impressive for all these reasons and i'm going to say quality finish it comes in heaps of colors the price point is now good it's got it's just backed as like well i like it it's a, like a quality product the finish is good the now the price point's good so now you're appealing to everything so i think in this what we need to do is we need to look in this review we're going to look at the other brands as well that compete against this for one for one. Speed on this is 342 feet per second. That's incredibly fast if it's true, which means this should be quite an aggressive draw. So I'm going to be interested to shoot the bow. I have not shot this bow, so I don't know how it competes. But I'm very interested in how it competes against all the other top of the line bows on the market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just look at those because most bows on the market today are amazing. They are so comparable. The price points today, I'm talking 2021, are just so similar, it makes it really hard in choosing a bow. So what we're going to do is we're going to just walk around the shop and grab some of the top of the line bows from the various manufacturers and just look at them and just sort of compare them. Um, now, I'm not going to shoot the other bows. I would have probably hopefully done reviews on those, but I'm just kind of interested to see where they fit with these features. Um, that the Ventrum has. Now this roller slide I really like. It's not adjustable. I'm pretty sure the Elites are. So we're just going to go around and look. This is your PSE equivalent bow. This is the Evil 32. So 32 inches versus the 30. But you know, like I said, Hoyt have got a Hoyt have got a 33 as well. But PSE have got a 34. So the 32 kind of relates to the um, 30. Um, 32 is going to be a bit longer. The cams are. You can see the difference in the cams very different shape the evil 32 is very smooth to draw a very similar rotating module to the hoyt but it's got a yoke system for tuning um price point roller sliding a roller um, cable guard with a carbon rod price point is about 1500 so the PSE is a little bit cheaper it's a metal limb pocket very similar bow the weight 4.6 the weight of this is 4.5 balance oh actually it's got a 344 so the speeds on these bows should be very very similar i'm, I'm kind of reflecting back on last year 2020 when pse underrated their speeds this year they've apparently rated at 344 which is incredibly quick um let's go and look at a couple of the other bow, top of the line bows and see how they compare Okay, so this is the Elite Cure, and I'm going to say this is the closest bow to the Hoyt Ventrum there is. The cams are almost identical as far as a, as a binary cam system. You know, they both have rotating modules. The Ventrum doesn't have the string stop. Um, but the way the cams, you know, they're, they're on one side, and one string's on one side, one string's on the other. The Elite has got an adjustable roller slide. The Hoyt doesn't. The brace height's going to be similar. Um, speed is 335, so the Elite Cure is a slightly under, but I'm going to guess the brace height's. I'm going to guess the brace height slightly longer. Brace height on your Hoyt is 6.5, and on your Cure is almost seven inches, so it's a little bit more stable. The grip, um, this is a metal grip, so it feels a bit different. It's a little bit squarer, a little bit more like your PSE grip, but very, very similar. Now what's different on your Elite is you've got this ability to have a um, 
String stop, like the Hoyt, which moves backwards and forwards, but also has a limb stop. So if you want that rock solid feel, you can get that out of the Elite. Price point, about the same, $1,600. It's almost like, to me, in 2021, the bow manufacturers are going, we're going to compete head for head against each other. And I think this is really exciting for a consumer and for a shop, because now you're not going to go, well, yeah, your Hoyt's like $300 more. Now this is your Bowtech Solution SS. It's a similar cam, so it's a binary cam system with cams either side, but with the Bowtech system you can move your cam left to right through this adjustment here. Roller cable side, which is the same as the Ventrum. Um, axle axle 30 inches, speed of 332, but it's got a weight of 4 pounds. Um, so yeah, it does feel significantly lighter than the Ventrum. Like you can feel them when you sort of hold them up against each other it's a really nice bow the solution ss and i think i really had a i think i really enjoyed shooting this when i did the review on it um the limb angles are almost look they're almost identical it's just so similar rotating modules but you can actually flip the module in the bowtech to make performance or a soft setting to basically make it a bit smoother look it's a quality bow and it's so similar it's kind of freaky but look at the difference in the cam design i'm really interested and you're going to say Stephen, well why haven't you done other reviews before doing the weight because you're not a weight dealer well not a weight distributor look i thought this bow looks so different to the other hoyts i'm like actually this bow's actually been in my shop for a couple of months and it wasn't until i pulled it out to display it that i was like wow this is cool um now see this thing here, this is like the PSEs. What they do, this is a bit of plastic to cover up the limb bolt on the side. So the limb bolt will go down here and they just do this to make it look aesthetically pleasing for your eye. I prefer to see the limb bolt like you can in your Bowtech to see how much you've got left inside so you don't, so the limbs don't pop. Um, now I really like the Bowtech. The Bowtech is about 1800 so it's about $200 more than the Elite and the PSC. So if the Ventrum is the $1,600, which is what I have in my head, it's a very, very interesting comparison. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to fit an RS to it, we're going to fit a sight and shoot this bow and see how it compares. Okay, so I've set up a basic sight, a whisker biscuit and a D-loop. So I haven't drawn this bow back. This is the first time I've drawn it. This bow has never been drawn back before. Um, now one thing I really like about Hoyt is they have here a little module number which says what module is what draw length. I love this. I think all bow manufacturers should have it. It makes life easy. It has on the other side, it has a specs of draw length, serial number, poundage, string length, cable length. These little tags here are awesome. They look great. All companies should have that. It just looks, it looks awesome. It's fantastic information. So in the past, when I've criticized Hoyt for not having rotating modules for their cam systems where the draw length don't overlap, so it stops at 28.5 and the next one starts at 29, which makes it really hard for consumers who are 28.5, which bow to get? Do I get the one which is 29 or 28 and a half? Um, I make suggestions and recommendations based on what my thoughts are. This cam system going from 25 to 30 is fantastic. Love it. I think this 30 inch bow, six and a half inch brace light should be pretty forgiving. I don't know what this is going to draw like. This is a big cam. I'm very interested in it. Theoretically, it's a big cam, so it should be smooth, but the speed is is pretty impressive. So we're just, we're just going to draw, try the draw cycle. Now the balance on the bow is slightly forward. I'm going to guess that's because it's stabilizer down there. This bow should feel good to physically shoot. Let's just move this down a bit. Right, so let's try the draw cycle and see how we go. This is a 60 pound bow, so it should be set on 60. It's a 29 inch draw length. Now I'm gonna say I ordered this bow in for a customer and I think he got pissed off waiting. Am I allowed to say that? Anyway, I think he got annoyed waiting. <laughs> I think you got annoyed waiting for it and I think at the time I would have said it's a seven month delay because of COVID. Um, I think it came in before but it is what it is. Um, 
it was actually ordered through an Australian distributor. So, I mean, you're an Australian... I'm not having to go at the Australian distributor. You're... You're the Australian distributor for Hoy. This is a this is an awesome bow. I'm not having to go at you, but this is an awesome bow. This should be something you're stocking if you're an Australian distributor for Hoy. You should be stocking a 60 or 70 pound bow in black and camo. Four bows at the very least should be in stock all the time. Um, and I'm not having to go, and I feel like I'm having to go, but I'm not like. In the Elite Cure, so in the comparison, I have all the Elite Cures. I have all the, I should have all the Botex Solutions, but I've sold them. Um, I should have all the PSC EVL 32s, which I do in 60 and 70 in every color, which I think I do. Um, that's what you should do if you're the distributor for a, for a brand. If you're not, you're not a distributor. I think up to you to, for your suggestions, but this bow is comparable to all those other bows I've shown and the distributor for Hoyt doesn't have it in stock. It's just like, well, how do you expect people to buy a bow when it's not in stock um, and they've got to wait six or seven months to get one? They're just going to get annoyed and go, go and buy the bow elsewhere. Or they're going to, It makes it hard to stock. There's no margin in this bow for me to stock it, so it's like it makes it hard for me to sell it because there's no margin. At a retail price point, there's no margin between what I pay for it and what I sell it for because that's the way they've structured the price of this product in Australia. It's just it's just rubbish. Hoyt, Hoyt in Australia is rubbish because there's no margin for the retailer. I assume all the margins at the wholesale end or they're dropping their prices. I'm not sure what's going on. But last time I've stocked Hoyt, I see it for sale at other, at other shops for less than I pay for it. So I'm like, well... It's just rubbish. So let's just try the draw cycle. It starts, so the start of it is really heavy. So very heavy straight up. So this is going to be fast. I'm going to guess unless it drops off. Feels, it feels the same poundage all the way from the very first draw till where I'm getting to. It's, it just starts off heavy and that's going to be something similar to the others. I'm going to say the, um, Evil, evil, EVL from PSE, evil, um, probably draws a little bit smoother, but I haven't got to the peak yet, so let's just, I feel like I'm getting to the valley here, it's dropping, drop, oh, just there, oh, oh, I'm going to take this shot, oh, wow, that shoots so well, oh, and you don't stop this bow. <laughs> Fair enough. Buy houses instead of stocking bows. Like, I'm all for your management decisions. Like, there's more money to be made in buying houses than buying bows, for sure. This is a shooter. This bow shoots really well. I'm going to say the draw length is physically short. So, I'm going to say this bow should have come set on... Um, 29 and it could be my eyes are so bad I can't tell what module it's on or where the settings are okay so I'm spent I'm here trying to see what the draw length is set on most bows come factory set at 29 inches I think the only number I can see is in here and it's real I'm going to zoom up on it because I can't actually see it And it's just down there where my finger is. So I'm going to say there's my criticism right there. I really can't see what draw length this is set on. I think it was B, which is 29 and a half. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like it's an E. It could be my eyes. Yes, you see me need glasses. Look. It's hard to see because it's kind of hidden behind the limb. E. B. 
and the letter's kind of hidden half in this circle, so it's like it's probably set on E. E is 28, so it's short. And that draw length felt short to me. I'm just going to, the shot itself, there's no vibration at all. It's very, very good. Um, so when I draw it, it's dropping there. I'm going to let that down. It's quite aggressive to let down. You don't want to let this bow down. That hurt quite a bit to let down. So when you get back here, it feels like it's about 90% let off. And although it's not a drop off like that, it kind of drops off slowly. When you go to let it down, it feels like it's like really rapid. So I feel like when I'm back here, I'm holding like five pounds. So, but the draw, stop, the draw stops are good. It feels really solid at the back. When I'm back here, it feels good. Oh, that's, it feels fast. It feels really fast. It feels quiet. It feels good. Look, I was watching a little bit of the uh, Hoyt video on this before I did this review. And I was saying, this is the most innovation we've ever had at Hoyt. Look, I think you guys are selling yourselves short for saying that. Like, Hoyt have done lots of good things through the years adjustable grips and lots of stuff. I'm not going into it all. This is clearly a good bow and just cooler what it is. It's a good bow and you priced it well. Um, it's just a shame there's no margin in it for the dealers in Australia. Now bear in mind when I'm shooting through a chronograph, most of the tests are done at 29 inches. So this is 28. So it's going to be slower than what it's published. The arrow I'm shooting is a gold tip velocity, 400 spine with about an 80 grain point. It weighs about 327. This bow should be set at 60 pounds. Um, I'm hoping the chronograph works and wasn't left on. I'm guessing my staff left the chronograph on. So Fortunately, my chronograph was left on, so the batteries are flat. It's not, or it's not registering. Um, so yeah, I think my batteries are flat. We'll just have another go. So with, I'm really sorry I don't have a speed, but it's one of the things when people use your equipment and they leave the power on. It's like, I do have replacement batteries and they're at home, but I'm doing the review. It's like, it's Friday night and I want to get this review done. So now what I want to do is I want to shoot at 18 meters. Fortunately, I don't have the speed. I'm going to say the speed of this bow feels quick. So... I'm going to say it feels to me to be comparable to the other bows that I mentioned. It, it feels comparable to the EVL, the Cure, and the Solution. In speed, it's definitely not a slow coach. It's definitely got weight. It feels good. So when Hoyt say 342, I believe it. Uh, you're going to have to see another review to see what speeds they crack, get out of the chronograph. It's just so disappointing when people use your stuff and they leave the power on. Oh, kills me. Um, which is, I normally do these reviews at home, but I've been doing them at the shop lately, so I've got all the stuff here at the shop, and people have been using my chronograph to test their bows, and they obviously left the power turned on. So we're ready, we're at 80 meters, indoors, so not outdoors, so most of my reviews are done outdoors. This is indoors, the lighting is excellent, um, and we're ready to shoot. Now I think I'm going to shoot this bow really well. The draw cycle is really good. It's a very solid back wall. There's no vibration in the bow. I feel like I'm going to nail it. Uh, 
not confidence or anything. It's just I feel like I'm going to nail it. Um, I think this bow is just beautiful to shoot. Um, there's no vibration. There's no noise. It's just lovely bow to shoot. Now, in that, I'm like, well, this bow is awesome. So let's see how it compared in price. So I did. I went around and I checked all the dealers in Australia who stocked this bow to see what their price point is on it. So the most expensive, I'm not going to name the dealer, but it's where I brought this bow from, is $1,707 Australian. Uh, the next was another Hoyt. So I think there's two Hoyt distributors in Australia. The other was $1,600. Um, there was another for $16.50 um, so they obviously kind of got some sort of arrangement with that um, and there was another one for $15.50 right so the price point varied $150 now for me to buy this bow I purchased it from the one which was $1,700 um, I don't know if I'm meant to tell you but anyway that's where I bought it from um, I buy it at dealer pricing. Um, I probably paid more than $15.50 for it. Now, the reason I don't know is I paid for it six months ago. I paid for it in advance. So I don't know how much I paid for it because I paid for it so long ago um, before the bow comes in. So I've got to pay in advance. So when it comes in, the bow just comes through to me. It just gets shipped and it's like, okay, I don't even know what I paid for it. Um, but generally there's not much margin. So it's generally like just rubbish because there's people selling the bow for less than I paid for it. But I did check the price overseas. Because uh, <laughs> I like this bow. Um, I can land this bow in Australia and make a profit. Um, so maybe it's something I need to look at. Um, this is a pretty good bow. Now I'm gonna say the Australian distributors and I'm here I'm sounding like I'm having a go at them. Like this is a good bow. The, EV, the Elite Cure is a good bow. The Bowtech Solution is a good bow. The PSE EVL32 is a good bow. They are so good. All those bows are really, really good bows. But this is a really good bow too. And what gets me, if you're a Hoyt distributor, you should be saying this is a really, really good bow. Look at everything Hoyt has done. And maybe these guys are saying that and I just don't hear it and I don't see it anywhere and I don't see anyone shooting this bow. And I don't see you stocking the bow. So it's like... And I see the, sh the other shops actually pushing other brands. Um, so And I see them pushing the other brands pretty hard. And I'm like, look, this is well priced. Like, I don't understand why you're not... It used to be that uh, when Hoyt left Australia... So back in the day, there was a Hoyt distributor in Australia, Hoyt. They left and they gave everyone a Hoyt distributorship. Everyone except for my dad... Um, and over time that has got down to there's two Hoyt distributors left in Australia um, and uh, sorry Benson's probably going to say he's a Hoyt distributor too I don't know if he is or isn't um, I don't think he wholesales maybe he does but they don't they never send me a price list so I wouldn't know um, I think they've kind of lost interest in archery but maybe you haven't maybe you're like right up there and you're firing away I don't know but anyway, it seems to be two Hoyt distributors in Australia and I don't know if they really distribute or, as opposed to retail. Um, okay, let's, let's have a shot. Now, I've got a whole bunch of indoor target faces up there, so I'm hoping I'm aiming at the right indoor target face. The pin aims really, really well. It's very steady to aim. Now, that could be because there's a little stabilizer stuck on the front. But now, I think the rules in Australia, if you've got a stabilizer which comes from the manufacturer, you're allowed to keep it there for your hunting situations. I don't know how that works, but. Um, this is to do with your rules if you're shooting ABA archery, which is your hunting, simulated hunting. I think if it's part of the manufacturer, then you're allowed to keep it. So I think that's really good. It absorbs, definitely absorbs vibration. It's a good thing.
This is such a lovely bow to shoot. I love the roller slide. The roller slide takes out all the vibration. Love the modules. I love the way those modules are built. Love the limbs. The limbs are past parallel, which absorbs all your shock. You notice I didn't mention bear. Bear obviously have top of line bows as well, and they're highly sought after. Um, but they seem to be a price point a little bit lower. So very good bows. And I should have probably pulled those out for a comparison. I didn't even think um, of that. But this is this is nice. Now, if you go to the Hoyt webpage, they'll say they're hiring. So that means they've got lots of vacancies. If you're going to work at Hoyt, and I'm not putting a thing there, if you're going to work at Hoyt, you've got to shoot a Hoyt. Um, and you've got to shoot, and you've got to not be a smoker. I think that's about it. Uh, I think they've got quite a few jobs going in the factory. Uh, it's kind of interesting that you're a big company, and you're like, you've got to put an ad out there saying we're hiring. and It's... Shows you, like I'd like to send my son over there and work for Hoyt. Because uh, <laughs> I just think that'd be a great experience. Um, like, would I like to work for, I would have liked to work for Hoyt when I was 20, 18. Like, that would have been cool. Actually, when my son, we went to the ATA show, um, and I've been to America a couple of, you know, obviously quite a few times, but I went once with my son, and my son's quite a good archer. Um, obviously, he's been shooting since he was two, and the whole family shoots, so. Um, but we're at the boning booth. This, is, this has nothing to do with the review, but you know, my review like this. We're at the boning booth, and the owner, the owner of the boning company said, if you want a job, if you even want to come here, we'll put you up and you can work in the factory. Uh, to my son, at the time my son, my son's a bit of a genius, so I'm not bragging, um, but he's got, you know, like he's in the elite spectrum of intelligence, uh, which is a bit unfortunate for him because I didn't have, I wasn't blessed with that. I was blessed with, I've got to work my ass off. <laughs> I just think like working for a company, I just think working's good wherever you work. Working is a good thing. I, I enjoyed all the jobs I've done. Um, but he offered my son a job to go there and work. I don't know what it would have been. But he said, if ever you want a job, come here and work. <laughs> and I was like, that's really nice that he offered that. I'm really enjoying shooting this bow. The, the stops, the stops, the draw cycle is very impressive. Like I don't know who the designers are and the engineers. You've done a great job with this bow, and you know I often will give. You know I'll say negative things when negative things I think are due. This bow is good. The grip is good. The draw is good. You've got good two-piece quivers for it. You've got good colours, the bow feels great, you've got great adjustability, price point, like I said, I know what it's, well, I do know what it sells for in America, I don't know how that competes against all the other brands in America, but in Australia, this bow is priced very, very well in the marketplace. Let's go down and see that group because I've got no idea where they're grouping. I'm hoping it's all on camera. I'm hoping I've aimed at the camera at the right target that I'm shooting at. Feels great. Um, now, the weight of this bow, 4.7, but it does have a stabilizer down here with weights on it. So, 
Look, there are a couple of bows that are lighter. Do I prefer, you know, which bow do I prefer? People ask me all the time. All the bows are so good. So, so good. I really want to shoot Elite. I really do. And, I, you know, why do I want to shoot Elite? I think the colors are good. I, I like all the features of the bow. I love the Bowtech. I love all the features of the Bowtech. Everything you've got on there. I think the PSE is a very smooth drawer. I love PSE. I've been shooting PSE for years and they just back, they back me up. Whenever I need anything, they just help me out. If ever I have a problem, they just fix it. Love PSE's customer service. Hoyt have done a very good thing with this bow. The engineers have done well. I suppose what I'm gonna say is I think Hoyt normally do an excellent job on marketing. And maybe they've been focused on target archers. I don't know what's happened. But I think with this bow, I don't know why I haven't heard of it. Um, this bow is really, really good. You've got really good two-piece quivers. You've got really good accessories that go with the bow to color match, to make the bow bling. Done. Like, it's really, really good. Let's go down and see how the arrows are. And see if I change my mind or not. Okay, so I'm up here at the target, and that's a pretty good group. Like, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, look, it's a whisker biscuit, no peep sight, no nothing. This is the first time I've shot it. It's a 28 inches draw length, which is too short for me, so I'm bending my arm. Most of those arrows are in the 10. Obviously, the sights are off a little bit. One low one, I don't know what it did there, it doesn't matter. That's a good group. Happy with that. Um, very, very good bow. Really like that bow. Now, a couple of <laughs> couple of things. I don't know if I'm happy on stuff. I just tend to chat away when I do <laughs> these reviews. Um, I kind of think, well, why does this bow sell? Where does it kind of sit in the marketplace? What's Hoyt doing with their, you know, promoting how they're doing things? Um, this bow is very competitive. Now, when I think about, well, I want a top of line hunting bow, do I think of this bow? No, I don't, and I should. This is a very good bow. Would I bow this bow? Would I buy this bow? Yes, I would, but I'm not a Hoyt distributor, so I clearly would not. I'm a PSE, a Elite distributor, I'm a Bowtech distributor. In fact, I'm the distributor for every brand except for Hoyt, and I have offered Hoyt $200,000 of upfront purchase of bows, and Hoyt have basically said no, go jump. I'm like, okay, if you don't want me to have $200,000 worth of products, if you don't want people to see Hoyt's in a shop, that's your choice. Um, saying that, um, this is a, like if you're a Hoyt shop, man, you could sell the heck out of that product. You could put your two-piece quivers on it, your sights, your RRS, and be very, very, very happy. Um... Be very interested in how the Ventrum 33 shot. Um, I would probably, if I was a 3D archer, I'd probably, and I'm more of a 3D archer, and you can say you're more of a target archer. Actually, I do more, like, I prefer more of the field, but I do a lot of target archery here. Um, like, for me, like, walking around my mum's place, which is a 3D course, you know, field course, I would probably like the 33 for more accuracy the hunting i really like the 30 because it's more compact and it just feels zippy it just feels great uh i love the whole way the bow's put together i mean in the past i i think i've probably mentioned about the limbs being quite sharp edges look they're not that rounded so they're not they're not as sharp, they don't feel as sharp as they used to on the edges. They just look good. I think the overall finish is excellent. Um, look, I don't know who the marketing people were before for Hoyt. I think when they come out with the black bow case, look at this, there's a black thing coming out. There's something in this black box. Like, yeah, like it's cool, but this is far better. This bow is far better. What, like... Like, fair enough to fire, to fire your marketing people from before because you're like pushing a black box. This time you've made a good bow. Like, this is a really good bow. Um, it's comparable to anything on the market. The price point's comparable. Um, 
So I'm going to say the only problem in Australia is customer service. Um, getting the product, obviously, you know, like if you can get the product, it's an issue. And you're competing against Elite, which is in stock. You're competing generally with Botech, which is in stock. You're competing with PSE, which is in stock. And PSE is readily available and customer service. If you dry fire the bow, if you dry fire pretty much all those bows, because I've had dry, fi dry fires on Botech, Elite, and PSE. And while it's not covered, it's not covered, those companies will generally look after you for the first time. Um, and I'm not saying that it's guaranteed they will. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they generally will because they generally do. Um, but don't be that person who you dry fire, you go and go, Stephen said it's covered. Like, I buy lots of bows and I don't ask much from the companies. I don't ask for sponsorship. They don't give me bows. I don't get anything from these companies and I sell thousands of bows, right? So when I have a failure... And it's not a failure of the product, it's a failure of the archer. I go, look, this guy's dry fired his bow, he's just brought it, can you help me out? Sometimes they might go, well, we'll do it at 50%. Um, sometimes they go, we'll look after you. But they generally won't do it twice. Um, so I've had people dry fire their bows twice and I don't even, I'm not even asking them the second time for, for a favour. Um, I don't know what the case will be with Hoyt when you have that because I haven't had that experience. The dry fires I have had with Hoyt, people have had to pay the whole lot, and I don't know if that's the dealer or the Ho or Hoyt or what. I don't know if the dealer asks. I don't know the situation. And so I can't comment on that. But as far as the bow and as far as the way this shoots, I'm this is good. This is really, really good. I love the color options. I love your two-piece quiver. Love the RRS. The sights are cool. It's a it's a shooter. It's a really, really good bow. The limb graphics are really good. Um, very, very good bow. Um, I normally mention negative stuff, and I probably mention that just because I think the dealers are not doing a very good job promoting it. I don't think Hoyt's doing a good job of promoting it. I don't know how well this sells in America. Um, I know Matthews is selling the heck out of things at the moment, and it's not saying that Matthews is out selling Elite or PSE, because I don't think they are. Um, but they are pumping out product which is at a premier price point, more expensive than Hoyt, with modules, and they seem to be getting traction in the marketplace. Um, where this, to me, should be competing. Like when you're thinking about top end bows, this should be in the thought process that when you walk into a shop, you think, wow, I'd like to shoot one of those. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Cool. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies, Ventrum 30. Um, Hoyt engineers have done a very, very good job with this boat. Thanks for watching. Bye.